Welcome back. In part one, I built a numpad using the Pico as a controller. In this video, I'm going to install KMK firmware and set it up. I'm going to break this down into three steps, so let's get into it. I quickly want to cover what KMK is for anyone who doesn't know. Uh, KMK is a firmware for Python-based microcontrollers. It is essentially an equivalent of QMK, uh, but it's also a lot easier than QMK in my experience. No messing about with like 15 million websites to get your keyboard layout and firmware. One to figure out what an E6 on the Pro Micro is and another one to flash it to the microcontroller. And you have to visit one just to make sure you tribute to the right keyboard gods. Oh, what's that? You want to make a small change to your layout, but you can't find the hex file for your keyboard? <laughs> Fuck you, start over. Ah! Whew. Sorry. KMK has every feature that I've looked for and wanted. I learned all of what I am about to show you from their GitHub. Step one, we need to install CircuitPython on the Pico. To do this, I just download the CircuitPython UF2 from Adafruit's website. Next, while holding down the boot button on the Pico, I plugged it into my computer. If it doesn't show up while holding down the boot button, Try just plugging it in normally. The Pico should show up as a external storage device. Just drag the UF2 you just downloaded over onto it. It should eject itself, install CircuitPython, and then show back up. And just like that, bada bing bada boom, CircuitPython is installed on your Pico. Now I need to get the firmware to run on this bad boy. So I'm going to head over to GitHub and download the latest version of the KMK firmware project as a zip file. With that downloaded, I unzipped it. I only need two things from this folder. Uh, that's the KMK folder and the boot.py file. I copied those from the folder and pasted them onto the Pico. This step really does all of the heavy lifting. My Pico already has a code.py file. If you don't have a code.py, create a new text file and call it code.py. In the code.py, now I have to write some code. But don't worry, most of it is already done for you. And I'm going to share what I'm using, so you don't actually have to write any code unless you want to change the layout. The first thing I'm going to do is copy the example text from the GitHub page into the code.py file. Boom, 90% done. I hope you have the notes of the row and column numbers from last time. Now we just need to add those into the file here and here. And I need to change the diode orientation. I did it opposite of what the default code expects. Next, I need to define the key map and that all happens down here. And just like that, the numpad should work. Here's a blank text file. You'll see we're getting some A's. And now we're getting other numbers. This is, in essence, a functioning numpad. And in fact, I've been using it like this for a few weeks. That wasn't so bad, was it? There are some other features in KMK that I'm going to use, but I think this is a good stopping point for this video. Simple, to the point and it should be enough to get you into some trouble. There are some predefined keyboard layouts already, and you can just put those onto a different keyboard if you want. In fact, I have a 60% keyboard that I put a Raspberry Pi Pico in and tested KMK firmware on it, and I love it. Another great thing about KMK is that you can open these from literally any computer. All of the files are stored in plain text, and you can really easily edit your key map. I do plan to make a follow-up video add in a second layer, and use tap dance or mod tap, but that will be in part three. Thanks for watching! I don't know how to do outros on these.